Andy Mogul. It's been a big week for Warner Brothers, and it wasn't all good. Zack Snyder, who Warner Brothers has been grooming in-house to be a top Hollywood director, delivered yet another disappointing opening weekend for the studio. To try and change the pop culture conversation, on Sunday night, Warner Brothers and Snyder announced that Amy Adams will play Lois Lane in their upcoming Superman reboot, reminding audiences that Snyder has a much better and more surefire hit on the horizon. But does he? As a studio, Warner Brothers is at a crossroads. The Harry Potter films are coming to an end this summer, and with it, a major source of revenue and pop culture status for the studio. To make themselves feel better, Warner Brothers has gone shopping, buying an entire second studio across the pond. This will serve as not only the home of a permanent Harry Potter behind-the-scenes tour, but also as a beacon of hope for new franchises from the likes of their other in-house directors, Christopher Nolan and Guy Ritchie, who just happen to live very close to this new studio. And you thought the studio system was dead. No, it lives on in a way, at least at Warner Brothers, where they have a stable of talent that they believe in, sometimes against all reason. And it's not just behind the camera. Blake Lively is someone that the studio is determined to make a star, hence her choice roles in the town in the upcoming Green Lantern. Oh yeah, Green Lantern! With all this talk of The Dark Knight Rises and Superman Man of Steel, it almost makes one forget that Warner Brothers and DC Comics have a superhero movie coming out this very summer. It's a very different approach from Marvel, who has kept the focus squarely on Thor and Captain America, rather than churning out a bunch of Avengers headlines. Warner Brothers does have some interesting non-comic book tentpole pictures in the pipeline, such as Ryan Gosling in a remake of Logan's Run, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp's vampire Pulp Dark Shadows, Bryan Singer's Jack the Giant Killer, and parts one and two of Peter Jackson's The Hobbit. Maybe one of those will be the new Harry Potter. But Warner Brothers is betting on their DC Comics franchise, in no small part due to Marvel's success. However, the real question is, will Warner Brothers keep getting in their own way? I mean, is Zack Snyder really still a good bet? Isn't Amy Adams more Lana Lang than Lois Lane? And isn't Anne Hathaway more Lois Lane than Selena Kyle? Why is The Dark Knight Rises shaping up to look like Inception 2? I mean, sure, Nolan's a genius, but remember, no director, no matter how brilliant, is infallible. And if you give them enough rope, they have a tendency of hanging themselves. And where's the buzz for Green Lantern? Is Ryan Reynolds really box office gold, or is that Hugh Jackman and Sandra Bullock? Plus, who on earth prefers Blake Lively over Leighton Meester? Warner Brothers should take note that while Sucker Punch's opening weekend is certainly embarrassing, it's going to be nothing compared to the embarrassment of tanking the entire DC Cinematic Universe.